From the Altai to the White Sea, the lands where Kazakh people rode their horses, the historical expedition will follow the footsteps of ancestors. The three-year journey was set out to the west. Kazakh traveler of the 21st century, Sapari Skakov and his team have visited more than 20 countries in 70 days. A wonderful story of the great journey is featured in our program, In the Footsteps of Ancestors. Featuring today, the heritage of Kipchaks in Ukraine. How are the residents of Polovetsk village related to the Kazakhs? Armenians and the Kipchak language. What can be the reason for revising the history of the origin of Armenians? What do medieval manuscripts in the archives of Kiev show? Great ancestors of the Great Steppe. The Kipchaks were the founders of the most powerful medieval states. This is proven by numerous historical monuments located on the territory of modern Ukraine. The country is one of the important destinations on the route of the expedition in the footsteps of ancestors. After Moldova, the caravan of historians headed to the Kalinin region. According to local historians, our ancestors came to Ukraine in the 7th, 8th or 9th centuries. These are the Sarmatians, Khazars, Polovtsians or Kipchaks. Balbals, the stone sculptors of the Turkic period, are the tangible evidence to this. There are many of them in the South Ukraine. Ukraine there are almost 2,000 baubles and stone boulders in Donbas. These are quite noticeable traces of our ancestors in Ukraine. The ethnonym Kipchak was used in various versions. For example, the Kipchaks who ruled in Egypt and Syria were called Mamluks. Kipchaks who lived in Armenia and Ukraine, Armenian Kipchaks. In Russia, they were called Polovtsians, and in Byzantium, Cumans. A huge variety of ethnonyms referring to the Kipchaks appeared during the migration of the Kipchaks from the Volga to the Danube Valley. It was from this moment on that the Deshta Kipchak state was divided into two parts. European nations in the upper Volga became part of the western Kipchak. The indigenous territory, a vast expanse from Altai to the Volga, was called the eastern Kipchak. Eastern rulers were more dominant. I believe that you have made a very important step forward in the history of Kazakhstan. This work, I think, will become the basis for studying the history of the Kipchaks not only in Kazakhstan but all over the world, including Ukraine, which is considered one of the greatest cradles of the Kipchak heritage. The city of Kamyanets Podilsky is a historical place. This is the first destination point of the expedition in Ukraine. The old part of the fortress, a witness of a centuries-old history, including the Kipchak era, was miraculously preserved here. The Kazakhs are descendants of the nomads, some scientists say. Haven't the Kipchaks ever built any cities? Then how had Sharukhan, Sugrov, Chashuev, the cities of our forefathers, appeared? Sharukhan is the present Kharkov. Once it was the capital of the western Kipchak state. The city is named after the father of the famous Kipchak ruler, Arctic, Sharukhan or Sarikhan. The Kipchaks knew how to build cities and urban civilization. This is evidenced by historical monuments left by our ancestors, including in Kamyanets Podolsky. Stone baubles in the courtyard of the local history museum of Kamyanets, Podilsky date back to the 7th, 8th centuries. They are directly related to the Deshta Kipchak state. According to historical sources, it was the Kipchaks who dominated in this territory in the Middle Ages. The peoples living on the Crimean Peninsula have been dependent on them for a long time. 
The Greeks and Byzantines paid taxes to the Kipchaks, according to the manuscript of famous European traveler William of Rubruck. Such stone monuments have been erected for the Kipchak warriors who did not return from the military campaign. Many baubals can be found on the island of Hortitsya. There are similar sculptures in the Dnepropetrovsk Museum. The Kipchaks have had quite sophisticated burial rites. They worshipped Tengri, the god of heaven, believed in the afterlife and the spirit of their ancestors. Those who perished in the battles to protect their native land were especially honored. Stone sculptures, ball balls, have been erected as a sign of special respect to the warrior. This is a visible evidence, which says that the spiritual world of the Turkic Kipchaks was very developed. The Turks worshipped the goddess of the earth, Umay Anna. There are many legends on this subject. Most of them are connected with Altai, the ancestral homeland of the Kipchaks. Based on the documents that we have, we can talk about the exact sequence of migration of the Kipchaks. They came to Ukraine from the southwest of Siberia, from Altai and Semerechia. This is evidenced by archaeological monuments in various territories the Kipchaks lived in. Stone baubles helped scientists to determine the time frame when our ancestors settled on the territory of Ukraine. The Kepchaks appeared here approximately in the 7th-8th centuries and laid the foundation for the future of the Crimean Khanate, which later became a part of the Golden Horde on the Crimean Peninsula. Our ancestors came here for a reason. They had to migrate because of a drought. The expansion to the west was necessary in order to preserve the growing power of the state and it was not easy because of the constant conflicts with the Pechenegs. The Crimean Khanate was the successor of the Golden Horde. Hence, the Golden Horde, in fact, did not leave the historical arena even in the 16th century. It lasted until the 18th century, until Russia invaded the Crimean Peninsula. Commander of the troops of the Golden Horde, Mamai, is buried in the Crimea. In the 18th century, one of his descendants, Abdugapar Karimi, wrote a history of the Crimea. The work can contain a lot of information about the Kipchaks. This great historical work is being studied now. The history of the Kipchaks in Ukraine is closely connected with the Crimea. The Bagratid state declined after the campaign of the Seljuk troops to Armenia. Some of its population moved first to the Crimea and then to Ukraine. As a result of this migration, Armenians were partially assimilated with the Kipchaks. Serious changes have occurred not only in the way of life of the nation, but also in the facial features of people. As a result, a new Armenian Kipchak ethnos was formed. The Kipchaks and Armenians spoke one language, the Kipchak. The Crimean Khanate has had a great influence on European politics once. It has had close relations with such countries as Sweden, Denmark, Russia, Transylvania, Moldova and Ukraine. The Kipchak language has acquired the status of the international language, therefore everyone had to speak it. In the Middle Ages, the influence of the Kipchak language was strong across the world. It was spoken not only by residents of the vast territory from Altai to the Danube, but also was learned by all who wanted to visit the East, including Europeans. The Kipchak language was used for communication in Egypt during the reign of Sultan Baibars. In those days, as traders said, it was difficult to survive without knowing the Kipchak language. One merchant from the city of Kifi gave such instructions to his son about the trade on the Great Silk Road. Before you head east, you need to grow a beard, shave your head and learn the Kipchak language. Inscriptions on the stone, sculptures and numerous manuscripts prove that written culture of the Kipchaks, which was formed in the Middle Ages, was at the high level. In the 16th century, 
армян кыпшактар. Үйде байтатыным, олар 500 жылдын сыртында кыпшактын деп сөйлөгөн. Кыпшак тили оларга кадимки ана тили сыяктуу болду. Кыпшак тилинде Armenian Kipchaks came to Ukraine in the 16th century. They have spoken the Kipchak language for almost 500 years. It was like a native language for them. They have written many manuscripts in the Kipchak language. About 40 of them had been stored here in this two-story library. Later, they have been moved to the Kiev National Archives. Kazakh scientist Alexander Garkovets translated most of these manuscript books from Kipchak into Russian. <laughs> Қазір кезде ол кітаптар Киев қаласындағы ұлттық архивке берілген. The reason for the deepening of the Armenian Kipchak relations was the friendly ties between the king of Georgia David IV and the Khan of the Kipchaks Arctic. Kipchak warriors helped King David to free Georgia and Armenia from the Seljuk oppression. Later, when Georgia was ruled by the son of David George and daughter Tamara, they also maintained close relations with the Kipchaks as their father. At the same time, such Kipchaks as Kutlu, Arslan, Shiaber, Apridon, Kubasar were involved in public administration and held executive positions. During that period, some Kipchaks went to the South Caucasus and adopted Christianity. Their ties with the Armenians became even stronger. This information is often mentioned in Georgian written sources. Бул жерде биздин бабалардын болгон делилитин The large amount of uh, churches proves that our ancestors had lived here. They have already adopted Christianity by that time. Before that, they were pagans. They preached Tengranism and believed that the God lives in heaven. Christianity was similar to Tengranism to some extent, and that is why they adopted this religion. Uh, this is an old Armenian Kipchak temple in the city of Kamyanets Podilsky. It dates back to the 14th century. According to local scientists, Kipchak traces can be clearly seen in the building's architecture. The Armenian Kipchaks, who have formed as an ethnos in the territory of Ukraine, named the god as Tangre. Consequently, the Kipchaks who worship the sky god Tangri have made many changes in the religious views of Armenians who adhere to the Armenian Gregorian Christianity. There is one more argument. Armenian Kipchaks, just as Kazakhs, did not marry anyone related to blood up to the seventh generation. You will not find such traditions in other Christian nations. This once again confirms that the roots of the Armenian Kipchak ethnos should be sought not among Armenians, but more among the Kipchaks. It is wrong to say that the Armenians spoke the Kipchak language. They were more like brothers for the Kipchaks. Armenian historian Edward Vartanov believes the same. He expressed his opinion in the book Kipchak. He wrote in Rostov on Don in 2011. There are 58 ancient buildings and structures in Ukraine. Among them are temples, prayer houses for performing various religious rituals. All of them are works of the Kipchak architectural style. There are many settlements in Ukraine showing that the Armenian Kipchaks prefer to live in large colonies. One of them is the village of Polovetsk, located 20 kilometers from the city of Kamyanets, Podilsky. The locals had been mainly engaged in agriculture and trade. This is evidenced by archaeological findings. The Armenian Kipchaks lived in a community on this peninsula. Apparently, there was a smuggling route near the town of Kamyanets Podilsky in the 16th century. Merchants who delivered goods from the east to the west bypassed big cities and stored their goods in small villages in order not to pay taxes. In the written European sources of the 11th-14th centuries, the Kipchaks were called Polovtsians. 
A long time passed, but residents of the village of Polovetsk still consider themselves Polovtsians, the descendants of the Kipchaks. There are several versions of the meaning of the word Polovtsi. Some scientists associate it with the word Polova, which means a straw. According to others, our ancestors were blonde and blue-eyed, belonging to rather a European race than a Mongoloid one. They believe that the Kipchaks are the descendants of the Altaic Sari Kipchaks. The word Sari, yellow, if translated from the Old Russian language, means Polov. The name of the village of Polovetsk is associated with the Kipchaks. They lived here in the Middle Ages. This was evidenced by artifacts found during excavation, namely a Kipchak bow and arrows. Archaeological finds indicate that the Kipchaks were excellent warriors. They paid special attention to military affairs. The main part of the Kipchak army consisted of horse archers. A separate unit was the cavalry. Each soldier had five weapons with him. The Kipchaks spent most of the time honing their military skills and hunting. It helped to shoot accurately and develop skills. Therefore, many rulers of medieval states wished to have the Kipchaks in their army one way or another. For example, they used to establish family ties, marrying daughters of Kipchak Khans, thereby securing the support of a militant tribe. Therefore, do not be surprised if you find Ukrainians wishing to be related to the descendants of the Kipchaks at present. The expedition members took DNA samples in order to identify if there are any kinship ties between locals and Kazakhs. The results of the test will show who is closer to the Armenian Kipchaks, the Kazakhs or Armenians. According to our assumptions, the history of the village begins in the 11th, 12th centuries. The founders were the Kipchaks. We can say that the Kipchaks are our ancestors. Of course, we are proud that we are the descendants of a militant nation. Summing up the results of the expedition to Ukraine, one can note, firstly, many European Caucasian states and Russian princes were interested in establishing friendly ties with the Kipchaks. They were one of the best warriors in the world. They demonstrated courage and valor in the battlefield many times. Therefore, many nations wished to see the Kipchaks among friends, not enemies, and entered into political and military alliances with them. Wherever our ancestors went, they did not confine themselves to establishing political superiority. They always adhered to their religion, customs and traditions, spoke their native language, leaving behind a rich spiritual and cultural heritage. They rapidly developed literature and art. The Kipchak culture flourished in the period of Golden Horde. We are still amazed by how vast the territory where our ancestors lived was. Our task is to find these roots now. We must involve young scientists in the research. Our ancestors left their mark in the history and culture of over 40 countries. This is Ukraine and Belarus and Lithuania and Poland and Hungary. I urge young scientists to study the rich heritage of their ancestors. Only in this case we will know our history and culture well. This is the true spiritual revival. In a rapidly developing modern world, it is important not to get lost in a large stream of information. 
it is necessary to preserve the core of national values, not to lose them and pass them on to the future generation. This is the main mission of the historical expedition in the footsteps of ancestors. The journey through Ukraine continues. The next stop of the caravan is the city of Kiev. There are many ancient documents related to our ancestors. For example, the State Central Archive of Ukraine contains 28 manuscripts in the Kipchak language written in the 16th century. We will tell you about their unique meaning in the next episode.